hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about picture talk and how to engage your students with imagery and a way to jumpstart your stories. My name is Scott and you're watching Immediate Immersion Live where we talk about comprehension-based instruction, grading and assessment, building student relationships, and classroom management for the modern language classroom. We'll be right back after this short intro. And welcome back, everybody. How is everybody doing today? Let me know in the chat below, in the comments below. Um, you will see I have some bruising on my face, so I apologize. I had an accident on Friday, broke a few ribs, bruised up my knees, got six stitches in my chin, and bruised all around my mouth. Only thing that hurts is my ribs. Otherwise, I'm okay. No head injuries other than the chin area. I have all my teeth. Everything is great. Thank you, Catalina. Catalina says, oh, no. And so I was on my way to school. Um, I ride a scooter to school. It's only a couple miles each way, and it saves me on gas. I hit the brakes too hard, went right over. I had a full motorcycle helmet, so that saved me there. Uh, thank you so much, Bernadette. Um, so save me there. I didn't even feel any pain. I went to work. Um, I was getting work done before school started, realized that, um, bleeding wasn't stopping. I'm on blood thinners and my bleeding wasn't stopping. Went to the front office to get a band aid, and everybody said, you need to go get stitches. So they forced me to leave school early and go get stitches. And that's where I am now. I'm just in lots of pain because of the broken ribs. Um, this doesn't hurt at all even though it looks really bad. It's gotten blacker since over the weekend. Like This morning, it turned all black all of a sudden, and my kids were horrified. So um, I had a fun story to tell my kids, and I also got to instill with them the importance of wearing a helmet at all times because I would have lost teeth and other things if I didn't have my helmet on, and who knows what would have happened to my head. But I'm okay. I'm here. I just wanted to that's why you're seeing a whole bunch of dark right here. Just wanted to let everybody know. So let's go ahead and get started with tonight's topic. I am excited to talk about picture talk today. And what's great about picture talk is you can use just about any picture that you want to talk about with your class. So you can use it with beginners. You can use it with advanced. It's basically putting a picture on the screen and then talking about it. And this picture can be a funny picture, a mean picture, cultural picture, let's say art or a sculpture, or it could even be like a scene from a culturally relevant place anything. That's why it's so great. It's so versatile. You can use it in so many different ways and it requires absolutely no planning. You could have a set of pictures all ready to go or you could just like spin the Google search wheel and go to Google search, do an image search for a funny picture and whatever pops up, start talking about it. It's great. One thing you don't want to do with picture talk is use it to teach an agenda. So don't look for a picture to specifically teach vocabulary or grammar or any of that. Just have fun with the pictures. And I don't know why I didn't plan for this earlier, but let me go ahead and set it up really quick. And I will show you some of my pictures. Just give me one second. I didn't think about doing this earlier. Sometimes my head escapes me, but I will show you some of my pictures that I use. And just give me a second to upload the file here. Where are my, oh, there it is. Okay. 
Should have had this already. Didn't even think about sharing what I have. Okay, so picture and download this as a PDF. Talk. Save. Okay, that downloaded. Let me go ahead and upload it to here. I'm going to switch screens for a moment. Bear with me. That's not what I want to show you at all. And go here. Drive. Live. Okay, so now you should be able to see it. Let me put my smiling little face up here. not showing my face I don't know why my face isn't showing at the moment but here are some of my pictures maybe it's just better that you just see the pictures and not my face at the moment but here's one with an orangutan um, that I found with some apples in its mouth um, here is a baby turtle trying to eat a strawberry um, here I've got one bird yelling at another. Here um, I've got a guy with a pet hippopotamus. Um, we talk about the, um, it's one of our conversation topics we talk about in Spanish 3. What would you do if you had a pet hippopotamus? Here's one of a guy getting chased by hippopotamus. Here's one we do about fears that this guy is uh, afraid of a ladybug. Here is about a hamster that we do. Here's another one with a hamster. This is a video that I do. I just goes because we, when we do the picture talk about the hamsters, I show a video of this little hamster eating a baby burrito. Here's one with an orangutan with messy hair. Here are two zebras laughing. Here is, um, oh, awkward family photos is how I found this one. So if you find, you can do search for awkward um, family videos, I mean family pictures. Here's another awkward family picture. Here's just a baby talking on a cell phone. Here's a baby doing who knows what. We have all kinds of little stories we make up about that one. Here's one about a hippo biting another hippo. Here's about two lizards dancing. Here's an otter. Here is a uh, seal yelling at a penguin. Here's a dog driving. Here is a happy turtle. Here's a dog stuck in a chair. Here's a dog scared by a mouse. Here is a tiger with a giant watermelon. Here is a sloth sitting in school. Here is a guy with some chickens on him. Here is an angry baby. Here are a couple weird uh, seals. No worries, Stephen. Thank you. I'm doing great. It'll take a few months of healing, but I'm doing good. Thank you. Um, here's one with a dog who got himself into trouble. I love the little sign there. Zero days since the last 
uh, Toilet Paper Massacre. Oops, hit the wrong button. There we go. Um, here's Giraffe riding piggyback. Here are um, some gorillas dancing. Here is a basset hound yawning with flying ears. Another dog driving. Here's a dog I always call it when my dog does this, goes on his back and shakes around. I call it the happy dance. So here's one doing the happy dance. And here is a little dog playing a banjo. So those are the ones that I have that just gives you some ideas of pictures that I use. Let me go back to my scene here. Um, some pictures that I use. So that's what Picture Talk is. It's just putting up one of these pictures. And whenever I find a funny picture, I might not even plan to use it right away, but I want to save it. I just add it to my file. So I always have a picture ready. So when I need to, I can always have, find pictures to talk about. Um, so that is what Picture Talk is. Now, let's go ahead and talk about why Picture Talk. I don't know if you've noticed, but in comprehension based instruction, we generally follow three lesson plan, three lesson plan pillars. We have our conversations, our story asking, and our reading. I change up the middle, the story asking part, to kind of bring novelty in. Sometimes we, we start from building a character. Sometimes we start from a movie talk. Sometimes we start from a funny answer that a kid gave during conversation time. Sometimes I will start a story from a picture talk. It's all the same thing, whether we're telling a story from pictures, with actors, with a character, from a picture, or from um, a set of screenshots in a movie talk, it's still asking a story. It fulfills that they need to listen to language to be able to speak language part. So that is the, um, that's that little area. So why picture talk? It gives me a way to change things up. My kids think it's something totally different that we're doing when in fact it really isn't. So it gives me and my kids a little bit of novelty. The pictures are really, really funny. And I can talk about anything. If, um, I mean, I told you not to target anything grammar or vocabulary wise, but sometimes I want to target culture. So I might look up a famous painting from an artist from that culture that I'm teaching and we can talk about that picture. Even in a level one class, we can do it at basic level of like what's in the picture, what colors are they? Or I can elevate it even bigger to maybe a scene. Like if I'm teaching Spanish, I could do La Plaza Mayor. I can get a picture of La Plaza Mayor when they have a lot of people, a lot of things going on there, and we can talk about that and bring in some culture. So there's lots of things that you can do. And often, not always, but often we can spring a fun story about the pictures. And it's a way to jumpstart your stories. I'm going to go back to... Um, the pictures here for a minute. Let me go all the way back. Some of the best ones that made stories. Um, this one. We have a story about, I start talking about the orangutan. So I'll say, class, is this a monkey or is this an ape? And all the kids go, monkey, 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 monkey. And I know, no, this is an ape. And it's a little bit of a teaching moment where I can teach them about what, they, um, what they're talking about. 
And actually, I think I just figured out something. Bear with me one second. There I am. I finally got myself to come up on the screen here. So you can see me as I'm talking. Let me just place myself a little bit over here. There. Okay. So um, we can talk about this. So I ask him about that. We say it's an orangutan or is it a gorilla? It's an orangutan. What does he have in his mouth? Oh, he's got apples in his mouth. Does he have a lot of apples or only a few apples? He's got a lot of apples. Let's count the apples. One apple, two apples, three apples, four apples, five apples. So we're counting the different apples. What color are the apples? Does he have a big mouth or a small mouth? Does he have big eyes or small eyes? Why does he have these apples in his mouth? And that always brings, this is where the story gets to branch out, where I was starting to get into a story. Why? So I usually get two things. One kid says he's stealing all these apples so he can eat them for himself. And another one said he's bringing all these apples to share with his friends and family. So you can take the story in whichever direction you want to take it. But you can see how a story is getting started just from describing this picture. Um, the second one, let's see, not the second one. Oh, yes, the small turtle. We have another one. We can come up with a story. We can start class. Let's look at this one. We have a turtle. Is it a big turtle or is it a small turtle? And technically it's a tortoise, but in Spanish, it's the same word. So we don't even worry about it. And I learned this the other day. I didn't even know this that all tortoises are turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises. So a tortoise is a subgroup of a turtle. I didn't realize that. So I thought they were related, but two different things, but apparently not. So we talk about it. Is this turtle big or is it small? Is it a baby or is it an adult? What is it eating? Is it eating an apple, an orange, a strawberry? Is the strawberry big or is the strawberry small? Does he have a big mouth or a small mouth? How many people think he's going to be able to eat the whole strawberry? How many people are going to think that he's not going to eat the whole strawberry? So you have all these different questions that you can ask about this. And then we can give the, the turtle a name. We can talk about it and start a story. Why does he want to eat this giant strawberry? Is he really, really hungry? Or does he want to a, a challenge? And Catalina says, do you do this mostly in the target language? Absolutely. I'm only doing it in English here, Catalina, because we all speak different languages. But if I was doing it in Spanish, I'd go, clase, hay una tortuga o hay un perro? Si, hay una tortuga. If it's a new word, I will write it up on the board with its translation. Clase, ¿es la tortuga grande o es la tortuga pequeña? Oh, sí, es muy pequeña. No es un, una tortuga grande. Clase, ¿qué piensan ustedes? ¿Piensan que la tortuga es un adulto o es un bebé? Sí, es un bebé. ¿Quiere comer una manzana? No. No quiere comer una manzana. ¿Quiere comer una naranja? Tampoco. No quiere comer una naranja. ¿Quiere comer una naranja o una fresa? Oh, sí. Quiere comer una fresa. That's kind of how I would go along to start. And then we can get into the story. Does he want a challenge? Or does he want, um, is he just really, really hungry? And we can expand upon that. Here's another one we have fun. I usually um, find two kids in class that will play the parts of these birds. And one will at the other one. And we have a little fun with that. 
Why is this one yelling at this one? What kind of fight did they get into? Um, why is this one ignoring the other one? Is he tired of hearing this one talk all the time? We have all different kinds of things we can go with there. Um, let's skip that one because you need a whole lot of background information. This one, um, we have, you know, we have a student who plays the guy and a student who plays the hippo. We name the hippo. Why is the hippo chasing the man? We can come up with all different kinds of things. Does the hippo catch the man or does the man escape? All different kinds of things to come up with stories. This one is with our unit on fears. And so I made this picture. I found this picture of this guy holding a Mata Mosca supply swatter, but he didn't have anything that he was afraid of. But he looked fearful. So I found this picture of a ladybug and put it right next to him, which kind of mirrors a real life story where I had a student who was terrified of what he thought was a spider, but it turned out to be a ladybug. And he was screaming, so it was kind of funny. So um, you can make these pictures too, and if you need to. Here we talk about why is the hamster running? What's in his cheeks? Where is he running to? Or is he running from something? Lots of different things we can talk about. But you can see how we can use these to jumpstart a story. And it really just... It's the same thing that we're always doing, but it looks a little bit different from the student side. And you don't know where the story is going to go. You just, your job is just to ask the questions. And you start with simple description, and then you start expanding from there. Let's go back here. Okay. So that's why picture talk. It gives me something to change up things. And number two, it allows me to jumpstart a story a lot of the time, not always. Sometimes it just goes stale and I can't do anything with it. And I'm like, okay, done with that. Let's move on to something else. So sometimes it doesn't work, but a lot of times it does. And you can just find different pictures and they will lead into some great stories. So we've kind of talked a little bit about it, but let's go on and talk about how. So I said, basically, you will go and you'll find your pictures. We'll talk about how I find my pictures in a moment. Um, it's at the end of our the talk today, we'll talk about that. But you want to find your pictures. And I said, you don't have to always pre-plan them. Sometimes we'll have... My kids will say, let's do a picture talk. They really are excited to do that. I don't care what we do. My only goal any day, any given day, is to speak as much target language as possible and make sure it's understandable to my students. So how that happens, it doesn't matter. And if they're asking for it, they're already going to be engaged. So then we'll just do it. Google image search. I go to images.google.com and I'll put in a search term. I'll say, what kind of pictures do we want to look for today? And they'll give me some ideas. We'll type them in there and then make sure you have your, um, I forgot what they call it, content protection on. So no inappropriate pictures will come up. But find something, have the class pick one, and then go from there. No planning necessary. Or you can plan. When I have free time, free planning time, I will often go through and do a search on myself to find three, four, five, or six more pictures to add to my collections. And I might try a picture and realize, oh, that one just did not go well. It didn't work well with my kids. So then I delete it and I won't use it again. And others I go, oh, this one works well. And I'll keep doing it. The beauty of also of picture talk is you can use the same picture for multiple levels at the same time. So for those of you who teach lesser taught um, languages like French, German, Mandarin, Japanese, Italian, I know I'm Arabic, Russian, where you're the only teacher and you're teaching levels one through AP, oh my gosh, that's planning hell. But what you can do is use the same picture 
and you just gear it to the level that you're teaching. You can keep it really basics for your lower levels, and you can notch it up for your mid and upper levels. You can have a much deeper conversation with your AP and your upper levels, but with your lower levels, you're keeping it really, really simple. So it allows for your planning to be very simplified, but you have got a differentiated lesson for all of your classes. So it really cuts down on the lesson planning. So first step, come up with your picture. Then with your class, you start describing the picture and asking simple questions about the picture. You start there. And as you're starting there, ideas are coming to your head that you can ask additional questions about. You start to branch off into stories when you ask how and why questions. And since those questions are a little bit more difficult for students to understand, or not understand, they understand them, but to be able to produce language to answer them, I allow my kids to answer those in English because how and why questions re usually require a lot of language skills. So I don't want to stifle their creativity. So in order, what I do is I allow them to, to explain themselves in English for that. And then we steal whatever the best answer that we get and we start branching off into our story. And just like any other story asking session, we're asking leading questions to get our kids through the four phases of a story. Character, you started out with the describing of the picture. So there's your character. Problem, that was your why question. Why did they, why does he have all the apples in his mouth? Why is he eating the strawberry? That brings you the problem. Then you can start working on how they attempt to solve the problem or what do they do with that situation. So for example, for my ape, um, I like the idea that he stole the apples. I usually go with that because I can have more potential funniness with that story. So he steals the apples. Why did he steal the apples? Who did he steal the apples from? We can keep elaborating from this using the target language, and it makes it much more easy. I can't predict what the questions are going to be. You can't pre-plan this. You have to just go with the flow. What comes next? When I first showed this picture with the orangutan and the apples, I had no idea what kind of story. I didn't know that my kids were going to branch off in one of two paths, either the path of um, him getting the apples to share with friends and family or the path that he stole the apples for himself. But once I got there, I knew which one was going to be a more interesting story. Now, if I were teaching, you know, elementary, I would have gone with the share with friends and family. But I teach middle school, high school, and the stealing is much more interesting. So we went with that one. I didn't know where it was going to lead. I just had to ask the questions to keep it going. Do you have to finish a story? No. If the story is going really, really well, you might be able to continue it tomorrow, but probably not. You can try, and if it fails, have a backup plan. Or you can just say, I'm done. The bell rang. We're done with that story. And we can, wherever it left off, that's it. And we can move on. If the kids ask about it, then you know there's some interest and you can bring it back and try to bring it to a conclusion if you want. So that's how you picture talk. And we kind of talked about how to bring it to a story all at the same time. You start by describing the picture. You ask the basic questions about the picture. And then you find the story in the picture with your students. So you can go from picture to story. So go on, skip those here. So the last thing is where to find the pictures. 
And let me move to a screen share situation here. That was not what it was supposed to be. So bear with me a second. Let me go back and let me go here and let's open up a new window and let's do this. Let's go share. It's going to keep giving me more problems. Let's try this. Source, share screen. There. does not want to work for me today. Why not? Let's take this out. Let's take this out. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay. So you should be able to see a Google screen. And let me get it up on my screen so I can see it too. Okay, so I will start with an image search. So I go to images.google.com and then I can see. Oops, that's not what I wanted to hit minimize on. Go back up here. Everything's not working. My technical difficulties today. Do, 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 do. I don't want entire screen. Oh, it closed my application down. That's why. but I want to see something else on top of my screen. Give me just one second while I figure this out. Uh, preferences. Okay, it's not gonna let me do what I wanna do. Okay, you can see it here. So then I can search in my Google images and look for something I can type in here funny animals and then I get a whole bunch of items that I could use you can do another hit one is funny baby pics And you can get some of these that you can use. There's one I showed you I had earlier. You've got some funny ones. Another common search is awkward family photos.
So you can see you have some funny pictures here and you can see some of the ones that I found doing this. They've got some funny ones that you can do. So those are the Google search ones, but there's a couple other places you can go. Unsplash.com is a free photo search. What, what is, I hit the wrong thing. Unsplash.com. Cancel, no, I want Unsplash. Unsplash.com. Okay, so Unsplash is a free um, image a stock photo place. So you can put in your like funny animals and these are not copyrighted. So you can use them freely and find pictures through them. Another one is Pexels.com. So it's another one, funny babies. And you can search from, these are not copyrighted, you're allowed to use them. So you can find all the different ones. Now both these are ad supported, so they'll try to send you to some ones where you do have to pay to use the pictures. But I can always find a lot of pictures um, that are free on here without any of that. And then there's another one, and I always forget this one. Um, Pi Pira Bay. It's not what I wanted. Where is that one called? Oh, Pixabay. That's it. Pixabay is the other one. Again, it's another what? Why is that searching that way? No, let's take that back. I don't know why it's showing that. Pixabay.com. Just go straight to Pixabay. Okay, there it is. Um, and you can search here for, um, let's see, awkward family. Oops, awkward family pictures. And you can search through. This one didn't have any matches for that. So let me try something else like funny animals. I don't know why this adult content keeps coming up. I don't know why that is. I don't know what's adult about funny animals. But you get my idea. These are a couple other sites that you can search um, to find some other sources other than Google image search. You'll get the best uh, variety in the Google image search. But if you're going to use it anytime outside of your classroom, then there's the copyright issues. If you're just using it for your class, for talks, you'll be good. But outside of that, you could get yourself into trouble. So these other three websites, Pixabay, Pexels, and Unsplash are great places for free um, software, for free pictures. Let me go on back over here. Close this down. Okay, so here we are back. Are there any questions or comments or any ideas that you have or how you might use Picture Talk, let me know in the comments below. And for those who are watching on the replay, I'm sorry for all the technical difficulties, but um, go ahead and also put your comments in. Questions, suggestions, I do read through those and we'll get back to you on those. And if you are finding these videos that we're doing every Monday helpful, please like and subscribe. 
that really does help us. We are trying to get to our 500 um, subscriber milestone. We've added just a few more uh, subscribers in the last week, but I'm trying to get up to that 500 mark. And your likes and subscribes will definitely help with that. Thank you so much for that like. So if there aren't any other questions or comments, I will say good night for tonight. And I will see you next week. I'm not sure what the topic will be, but we'll be back here next Monday. Same time, same channel, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And if you have any questions or comments in the meantime, you can always ask them in the comments afterwards. I said I keep up to date on those and I will answer them as I see them come across. So thank you so much, everybody. I hope you all have a great week and I will see you all next week. Good night, everybody.